the book of Leviticus. It's certainly not the most popular book of the Bible today. So what's it about, and what makes it so important? Hi friends, I'm Jeffrey with Overview Bible, and we're going to look a little bit at this really important but often misunderstood book of the Bible. Now, if you're really familiar with the Bible, then you already know that the Bible falls into two major sections. There's the New Testament, which looks at the teachings of Jesus and the teachings of his followers. And then there's the Old Testament, which looks at the relationship between God and the people of Israel. Now, Leviticus is the third book of the Bible, and it's therefore the third book of the Old Testament. The first five books of the Old Testament are known as the Torah, or the Pentateuch, or the books of Moses. And these were the foundations of the Hebrew faith. And right in the middle of this group of five books, we find the book of Leviticus. Now, the book of Leviticus gets its name from the tribe of Levi, which is a group in ancient Israel that was responsible for maintaining the temple and other holy artifacts that the ancient Jews used to interact with God. And this book is really important because it tells the beginnings of that whole story of how the ancient Hebrews interacted with this really powerful being that they believed was dwelling among them on earth. Now, we're going to look at the structure of Leviticus. We're going to look at the actual content of the book here pretty soon. But in order to understand why this is so important, we need to look at the theme of Leviticus, which can be summed up by a simple command that God repeats throughout the book. Uh, the book is set up with God giving messages to Moses, and sometimes Moses and his brother Aaron, to pass on to the people of Israel. And a repeated message from God is, be holy as I am holy. So the people of Israel are supposed to be holy, uh, just like God is holy. But what does holy actually mean? Well, holy means separate, set apart, 100% uh, sacred. It is not a common thing. And so what the ancient Jews believed was that their God, whom we'll just call God, uh, was, was very, very holy. He was completely separate from, uh, from the world that they lived in. He was high and above all humans, all animals, all features of nature, and all the gods of the other nations that the other folks worshipped. Uh, you might remember in the book of Exodus when God rescues the people of Israel from not only the people of Egypt, but also the gods of Egypt. That's what the ancient Jews believed. Uh, and so what we find at the opening of Leviticus, or right before Leviticus begins, is God has rescued Israel. He's taken them out of Egypt and led them into the wilderness where he has made this agreement with them. And before he makes that agreement, we have this scene of God at the top of a mountain, Mount Sinai. He's appearing in this form of a fiery cloud. Uh, and then at the foot of the mountain, you have the people of Israel. They're camped out there. And there's this great distance between God and Israel. That happens in the middle of the book of Exodus. That's when the people are hearing the Ten Commandments. But at the end of the book of Exodus, we have God, we have this cloud coming down and dwelling within Israel's camp. This is huge for the ancient world because you have this all-powerful cosmic being now living in a tent with regular mortal people. It's a huge thing to have to deal with. And uh, so essentially what we're looking at in the book of Leviticus is God has moved in with Israel. We have this huge powerful being that is now trying to coexist with mortals who are not as holy and not as, uh, as, as special and powerful as their God. So Moses makes a tent, it's called the tabernacle, and this is like a portable temple. This is a place where heaven can meet earth. It's where the divine and mortal realms can overlap. And in the, at the end of Exodus, we have this, this problem. Israel breaks some of the agreement that God made for, uh, with them at that mountain. And so that's not very good. We already have it established that humans have a hard time uh, living up to the standards of, of God. Uh, and 
even Moses isn't able to enter this portable temple. So Moses can't even come into this tabernacle to, to meet with God. So this is a problem. We have this very holy being surrounded by unholy people. But by the end of Leviticus, we have Israel knowing some laws that can allow them to interact with God and live in, in this camp with, with their God. Moses can enter the tabernacle. That's really good. We see God speaking to Moses in the tent uh, at the beginning of the next book of the Bible, Numbers. And then by the end of Leviticus, we have an order of priests from the tribe of Levi uh, that maintain purity. In fact, you might sum up the book of Leviticus as Israel's purity code for coexisting with their God. Now, when we talk about purity, it's very closely related to holiness. It's not necessarily about uh, being good or bad. It's about being ceremonially clean or unclean when you're, or when you're in the presence of a holy being. So, what we see in the book of Leviticus is this theme that the closer a mortal gets to God, the more ritualistically pure they're going to have to be if they want to survive. Because what we see happening in the book of Leviticus is God's holiness consumes impurity. It consumes anything that is not ritualistically pure, that hasn't made itself sacred uh, to be in its presence. It just consumes it, almost like a, almost like a fire consumes kerosene. Uh, the, the holiness of God consumes impurity. And so God helps the people of Israel live in, in his context because uh, they, if they're going to be close to this powerful being that wants to look out for them and protect them and provide for them and guide them through the wilderness, then they're going to need to uh, set themselves apart from the rest of the world because they need to be more ceremonially pure. They need to be uh, more, uh, more reverent and more, more set apart if they're going to be living with this holy other being. So that's the setup that we're looking at in the book of Leviticus. Uh, it's known as a rule book, and that's exactly what Leviticus is. Uh, it's God through Moses and Aaron giving the people of Israel in various groups, uh, various groups of the people of Israel, that is, guidelines for how they can coexist in a very close proximity with a very powerful, holy being. So that's what's going on in Leviticus. And if you keep this in mind, then the structure of Leviticus becomes pretty straightforward. We start with uh, rules for the priests. And the priests were these mortal people that went between God and the, the rest of, of, of the humans. So these folks were responsible for sacrificing animals. They were responsible for performing various rituals that helped make, that helped remove uncleanness, this, uh, this ritualistic uh, impurity uh, from the people and from themselves and from the areas where they would worship God and, and meet with God and help move people toward this state of cleanliness or this state of purity. This is where, uh, th this is where we see uh, many of the sacrifices like burnt offerings and sin offerings that show up in various parts of the Old Testament. And during this section, the first 15 chapters, uh, some Aaron, Moses' brother, has a really, really terrible day. Uh, Aaron is inaugurated as the high priest of, of Israel. That's been set up uh, before, and his sons enter this priestly service. But the problem is he has four sons, and only two of them survive their priestly duties. Two of them die because they don't engage with God in a ritualistically acceptable way. They don't treat him with reverence. We don't know specifically what it was that they, that they did wrong. Uh, the, uh, the book of Leviticus just says that they offered strange fire. Uh, before God. And there are all kinds of theories about what that looks like, but the point is they were in violation of this, this status of, of being clean and presentable for this very holy, very powerful, uh, very set-apart 
being. Uh, but two of Aaron's sons survive and continue to serve as priests. So we have, we have this setup of uh, a group of people designated to go between uh, the mortals and the divine uh, to offer sacrifices and perform rituals. And this culminates with the 16th chapter, which describes a very, very, very special ritual uh, in ancient Israel. And it, we call it the Day of Atonement. Uh, and what this ritual does is it essentially cleanses or makes sure or preserves the purity of that tabernacle, that tent. It cleanses the holy place. That's that place where God and uh, God and the priests could meet. And so once a year, uh, they pretty much said, you know, we've been offering these sacrifices, we've been doing all these things on behalf of the people to keep the people ritualistically clean. But once a year, we're going to do a full wipe, make sure that the, the place where we're meeting with God is, is pure and clean, make sure that any sort of sins or um, offenses against God have been, have been accounted for. And so we, on, on this day, this, uh, we, we see two goats getting, getting sacrificed. One of them dies and one of them bears the collective sin of the people off into the wilderness. And that's where we, that's, if you hear people referring to someone as a scapegoat, someone who bears the blame uh, for, for someone else, that's, uh, that's where that term comes from. We've got a, we've got a scapegoat uh, in, uh, involved in, in this ritual that cleansed the holy place, that tabernacle. And then the second half of the book, uh, chapters 17 through 27, it's known as the Holiness Code. And so we've looked at the holy priests, we've looked at the holy place, and now we have guidelines for a holy people. Uh, these, are, these are rules, some of them are for the whole nation, some of them are for the, the priests, but they basically spell out the, the ways that the people of Israel can behave in a more ritualistically pure way, or they can stay more, uh, more ceremonially clean around God than the nations that are worshiping other gods. So that's, that's what we see happening here. The, the standards are higher for the priests because they have to interface with, uh, with God in the tabernacle. Obviously, the tabernacle needs to stay very, very pure. That's why we had that whole Day of Atonement uh, ceremony that was covered earlier. Uh, we learn about some festivals that God gives to the people. Moses and Aaron teach the people how to how to celebrate and worship uh, their God and how, how he has taken them out of Egypt and made a dwelling place among them. So this is a really big deal uh, for, the ancient, uh, for the ancient Israelites. And in this section, the people need to face a choice. And what Moses does is he says, you, you can choose between the blessings of living in a way that recognizes this holy being in your presence and maintaining purity, maintaining uh, his laws and obeying him. And that brings blessings. Or you can disregard this powerful God that is living amongst you at your own peril and risk bringing on the curses of his discipline. So that's the book of Leviticus. It's a list of rules and rituals that the ancient Israelites believed would help them coexist physically with the creator of the physical realm. It's a really, really fascinating concept that sparked the need for this book. And I hope that this video has helped you understand why it was written and what it's all about. I'm Jeffrey with Overview Bible. I make videos and other resources like these to help folks understand one of the most important books that's ever been written. And if you want to understand the whole Bible, including the book of Leviticus and how it fits into it, I've actually written an ebook called The Beginner's Guide to the Bible. You can check that out in a link below. It's available on my website, overviewbible.com. I hope this has been really helpful. Hey, if you want to see more videos from me, go ahead and hit subscribe. That way I can notify you as soon as the next one goes live. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.